Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're just going to be solving a very simple circuit that involves a resistor and a capacitor. It's a very simple problem. Let's say we've got 10 volts here. Let's go over 5 kilohertz frequency. So obviously this is an AC voltage, right? 1 kilo ohm resistor and a 0 0.022 microfarad capacitor cool so what we're going to do is let's attempt to calculate the voltage across the resistor this voltage here let's also calculate the voltage across the capacitor and then we'll also calculate the phase angle as well cool okay so let's start off first with in order for us to get the voltage across the resistor and a capacitor we need to find the impedance for the whole circuit so, so we should know that the impedance is found with z is equal to r or the impedance is equal to the resistance minus j x b since we're just dealing with the capacitance and the resistance okay so we know that our resistor value here is 1k so let's find out minus j x c now so we know x c is equal to 1 over 2 pi f c right so that's going to be 1 over 2 pi times 5000 and this is our kilohertz here and then we're going to multiply that by 0 0.022 microfarads so let's put up our calculator okay so we go 1 over 2 pi times 5000 times 0 0.1234567 and so that gives us 1446.86 ohms that's for our capacitor and you could just basically say that's 1446 1447 okay and then the key point to remember here is that because this we're talking about the capacitor here right so we're going to have a minus 90 degrees phase shift because obviously we're asked we're, we're going to calculate the phase angle so we want to keep the phase angle in mind okay so we've got our value here now 1447 ohms at minus 90 degrees and our resistor doesn't have any phase shift right so it's just zero degrees but now we can work out total impedance for the whole circuit i'm just going to make this whole calculation smaller okay so we can rewrite so we can rewrite our impedance equation now as 1000 minus J1447. Okay, so we now need to find the current in the circuit. So let's convert this rectangular form of impedance into polar form. So that, that way we can deal with dividing much better, which we'll, we'll see in a minute. So what we do is we calculate the magnitude of the impedance, which is equal to square root of the resistance squared plus the capacitor's reactance squared so 1447 squared square root of all of that and let's get down our calculator let's do a thousand squared plus 1447 squared that gives us that and then we can do the square root of the answer that gives us 1758.92 which is just 1759 ohms. All right, so that's the magnitude part of the impedance. Now let's get the phase angle. So to calculate the phase angle of the impedance, a little bit complicated to remember, but it's minus tan to the power of minus one, so the inverse of tan, minus, and then times by 1447 divided by 1000. Okay, all right, let's pull up our calculator again. So we've got minus the inverse of tan, 1447 over 1000. And so that gives us minus 55.35 degrees. Okay, so this is what we was after. So we've now got the impedance in its uh, polar form. So we can now make all of this smaller, give ourselves some space, space to work. 
Okay, so to find the current, we just use Ohm's law, right? So the current, which is I, is equal to V over R. And so we have our voltage, which is just 10 volts over here. And it's actually got no phase shift. If it did, it would have it, for example, here. But we don't have that. So it's 10 volts, no phase shift. And then we divide that by our res resistance which we've worked out over here. And so that is 1759 at a phase shift of minus 55.35 degrees. Okay. So here, what we need to do is we need to divide the magnitudes and then subtract the phase angles. And that's the whole reason why we converted it into polar form because it's easier to divide polar form when we're looking for the current. So because I knew that we was going to be dividing by the um, impedance looking for the current obviously in order for us to find the voltage across these two components that's why we convert it into polar form so let's now all we have to do is we just have to do 10 volts divided by uh, one, uh, 1759 and then subtract to zero uh, subtract minus 55.35 from zero let's pull up our calculator so we've got 10 divided by 1759 and so that gives us that's 5.6 eight millivolts so 5.685 so i suppose we could say 5.69 and then zero so what we're doing here we're doing zero in terms of the phase shift zero minus minus 55.35 so this is an important point but important point there is obviously two minuses make a plus so zero plus 55.35 is going to be equal to 55.35 55.35 and so this is our current and we're pretty much all the complicated stuff is done from here now so for us to find the voltage across the resistor then we just obviously do v is equal to ir right and for us to find the voltage across the capacitor we just do v is equal to i times x c so super easy the voltage uh, is equal to 5.69 millivolts, milliamps, sorry. Did I write volts here? I did look at that, I wrote volts. <laughs> uh, let's go amps, 5.69 milliamps. So 5.69 milliamps times a thousand ohms, and that's gonna give us 5.69 volts. Okay, and we can't forget the phase shift, so we need to remember that we've also got, we need to add the phase shifts together. So we've got a 55.35 phase shift here, plus, and the resistor has no phase shift because it's a resistor, that's zero. And so that leaves us with 55.35 degrees. And remember, the reason why we need to calc and keep up with this is because we're being asked to calculate the phase angle. Okay, so let's keep those and put that to the side then and let's do the capacitor now. Okay, so VC is equal to 5.69 milliamps again. And then we're multiplying that by 1447. Let's bring up our calculator. 5.69, this is in milliamps times 1447 and then divide that by divide that by a thousand that gives us 8.23 volts and now let's do the phase shift and here's where it's very very important remember up here we've got our phase shift as being minus 90 degrees because it's a capacitor so the phase shift here is 55.35 which is for the current here and then we've got plus minus 90 degrees. So let's use our calculator for that. 55.35 minus 90 degrees. And that gives us minus 34.65 degrees. And we are pretty much done here. So, so we was asked to calculate the phase angle and I'm just gonna draw a very quick phaser diagram and that will actually allow us to see fully what the phase angle is. So if we take our reference voltage as our main voltage, 10 volts, 
if we draw our capacitor, we've got VC, and that was uh, 8.23 volts at an angle of minus 34.65. And then we've got uh, our voltage across our resistor. Zoom in here. Our voltage across our resistor, and that's less 5.69 volts. And that's at an angle of 55.35. This is our phasor diagram. And if you add those two together, you shouldn't even need a calculator. You can see you've got a 90 degree angle here. So 55.35 plus 34.65, that gives you 90 degrees. And that's obvious because we only have our capacitor and that's causing a minus 90 degrees. And that's it guys. So it's a fairly simple um, problem, very easy to do. And it's also super, super easy to make mistakes in. Your mistakes are just gonna be in calculations, but other than that, it's all good, nice and easy. Just follow the steps and you should be good. All right guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.